Welcome back. So in the last few lectures, we've been looking exclusively almost at the linear system x dot equals ax. Okay, so this could be a high dimensional state x, some linear dynamics may be linearized from a nonlinear system around a fixed point. And we have some actuation plus BU. So we have some control knobs in U that we can affect the system with. And we know if the system is controllable, then we can design this control law to arbitrarily uh, manipulate the system, basically. Okay, so I want to just keep track of everything. Um, we have X in Rn, we have U in R. Q. Okay, so I have n states Q inputs. Um, and let me just draw the sketch of the diagram of what we've been doing. Okay, so we have our system. This is our system. And it has been x dot equals ax plus b u. We're assuming that we can measure everything about the state. So our measurements y are equal to x. They're equal to the identity matrix times x. So what's coming out of here is just x. And then the idea is that there is some state feedback, some full state feedback, u equals minus kx that optimally stabilizes the system. Okay, so the input u, and when I say full state feedback, what I literally mean is I'm measuring the full state of my system x. I'm feeding that back into my controller, so my u equals some constant matrix times my full state, and that's fed back as the input into my system. And so, for example, I can develop this using the linear quadratic regulator. So I could uh, develop this using LQR, and that would be optimal in some cost function if I knew this full state information x. Okay, that's what we've been doing so far. And just to go one step farther, if I plug in u equals minus kx into this, I get x dot equals ax minus bkx. So that's the same as x dot equals a minus bkx. Okay, so I have basically full authority to manipulate the eigenvalues of this system with closed loop feedback to make them anything I want. And LQR is a particularly good choice um, that balances you know, how aggressively I'm stabilizing the system and how much control expenditure, how big this U is to do it. And so sometimes I'll call this KR for my regulator. My KR will be my regulator, okay? That's what we've done so far. So where are we going? Um, this is going to get really interesting. So in real life, I don't actually often have access to my full state of my system. So for example, on the inverted pendulum on a cart, maybe I don't want to measure all four of my state variables. Maybe I just want to have an encoder to measure the theta position. And then I ask myself the question, can I back out the full state? So in reality, I don't always have access to full state measurements. I probably only have access to some limited measurements y, which equals uh, some c times x. And in general, y is going to be in rp. So I'm going to have, um, let me write this over here, rp. I'm going to have p measurements of my system. So p might be much, much less than n. So remember, in even if I had like a million dimensional system, I could still have full controllability with one actuator, one column of B. In many cases, even if I have a million dimensional system, I can get full estimation with one, uh, one row, one measurement, one measurement of my state. Okay? And so that's going to be the name of the game. Before we were looking at the controllability, controllability, what we call CTRB of the A and B matrix. Now what we're going to be looking at, so the new thing that we're going to be doing from now on, is looking at the observability of A and C. So there's this dual notion of the observability. And what's really nice is that, there's a Y, the, what's really nice about observability, I'm going to call this OBSV, the observability of A and C, is that actually much of the linear algebra 
of figuring out if I can back out the full state from limited measurements, the linear algebra here is almost identical to the linear algebra here. It's just transposed. Okay, so it's almost identical, and we're going to work through what that means and what the implications are. But controllability meant, can I steer the system anywhere given some u? What this means is, can I estimate any state, any high dimensional state x, from a time series of my measurements, from my measurements? Uh, y of t. And so this is actually kind of remarkable that in a, even in a high dimensional system, oftentimes I can estimate that full state from very, very few measurements of my systems if I know what the dynamics are, if I know this A matrix and A and C are observable. And so in MATLAB, for example, this is exactly the same kind of rank of observability AC equals N, and the system's observable. So a lot of the, the MATLAB and the linear algebra we're going to borrow from controllability, but the interpretation's a little bit different. So going back to this picture here, we would like to have full state measurements of our system X, because if we can measure all of the states of our system, we know an optimal full state feedback controller, really easy to get, and it works really, really well. Okay? In practice, we don't always have access to the full state. We have measurements Y. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to not only develop a controller, we're also going to develop something called an observer or an estimator, so that given Y, we're going to back out what x is, and we're going to use that as a proxy for this linear quadratic regulator. So I'm just going to show you what that diagram looks like, and then we're going to spend the next few lectures working out what observability means mathematically, how you would design that observer, um, and then we're going to put the two together. Okay, so now in a more realistic system, I'm going to have a system, okay? But now it's going to be x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx. Okay, so I don't have, I don't have access to all of my measurements. What is coming out of here is now y, not x. So then what we're going to do is we're going to develop something called an estimator, um, and in this case we're going to use we're going to use the famous Kalman filter. But basically, this is just a full state estimator. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you what comes into here in a minute. But the output of this Kalman filter or full state estimator is an estimate of my full state x. Okay, and I'm going to call it x hat. So it might not be exactly x, there might be some noise or some disturbances. But basically, the output of my estimator, I take my measurements y, and I'm going to estimate the full state of my system, which I can then plug into my optimal full state feedback controller. So now I'm going to plug x hat in using LQR, and that u is going to get fed into my system. Okay? Now, there's a couple of catches here. I mean, this gets a little more complicated because if I really want to estimate my state x for my measurements y, I also have to know how I've been kicking the system because it's not independent from u. So I also have to take u and feed that into my Kalman filter. Okay, so my Kalman filter takes in measurements of the system and what I'm, how I'm kicking the system. And essentially, it's a dynamical system, x hat dot, equals some new A matrix. I, I'm not going to write it all out right now, but it's a, it's a dynamical system. It's a linear dynamical system that essentially estimates this full state x hat it, given knowledge of y and u. Okay? Once we have that estimate of x hat, we can then combine it with our, our beloved LQR controller and stabilize the system. Okay, so that's where we're going. We're going to take systems where we don't measure the full state. We're going to have to build an estimator for the full state, and then we're going to use that in conjunction with LQR. And what's really, really interesting is that the same optimal optimization techniques to get LQR 
are going to be used to get the optimal Kalman filter. So again, there's this duality between cons uh, controllability and observability. I can use the same linear algebra that I used to build my LQR controller to build my optimal Kalman filter. And what's really remarkable, I'll show you this later, is that I can develop these separately in isolation to each be optimal. So I can develop an optimal full state controller. I can develop an optimal full state estimator. And when I combine them, the combined system will also be optimal in the same cost functions. So this is going to be really cool. We're going to leverage everything we know about controllability and LQR and eigenvalue placement. But now what we're going to be doing is taking measurements and backing out an estimate for what our full state of the system is doing. Okay, And this is much more practical. In the real world, sensors are expensive, and you don't get to measure everything. So we're going to have limited measurements to control our system. This is sensor-based feedback, and it's much more realistic. OK, so next time we're going to dive into observability, and then we're going to develop these systems. Thank you.